Hello and welcome to this FPL Game Week 34 free hit team selection with me, Holly Shand. The chip is active and very excited to attack the seven double game week fixtures. Let's get this one to 500 likes and subscribe to the channel. Let's get into it. Starting off with how my game week 33 is going and not too bad actually. I'm on a green arrow as things stand recording this video on Monday morning and with Gusto and Palmer in the Monday night fixture. I don't think too much could happen to turn that arrow red at the moment. So that was very much needed. And I kind of got a bit lucky as well. I saw the leak that Foden started for City. So I made my planned moves of Richarlison to Foden and Powell to Gusto. But then it all went a bit pear-shaped when Foden was on Man City's bench. He didn't come on, which meant that Barkley in the same fixture who scored for Luton has auto subbed on, which has left me on 54 points with two to play and a big green arrow up around 100k. I ended up going Haaland captain having heard of all Luton's defensive injuries and seen the leak that Haaland started. I think these team leaks now, they were in a bit of a sticky situation with those because it's clear there's so much on the line for Manchester City and Liverpool. They're trying to flush out those um, individuals that are causing the team leaks, which, you know, you can't blame them, which may make it a little bit more difficult to navigate this final phase of the season and in particular game week 38. Other points were from Solanke and a double up on the Brentford defence paid off with Flecken and Regulon both getting a good return and some bonus in there as well. Before I get on to my free hit team selection then I just want to look at the midweek fixtures because we have the reverse leg of the same fixtures we had last midweek and a lot of these very much hang in the balance. So Arsenal travelled to Bayern Munich having drawn their first leg. Uh, Bayern got two away goals. Man City are at home to Real Madrid. It was 3-3 after the first leg. Three away goals for City will definitely help there but plenty still to play for. They both play on Wednesday evening and then on Thursday we've got the Europa League and Europa Conference League fixtures. Liverpool have got it all to do travelling to Atalanta having lost the <laughs> home game 3-0. How bizarre that Liverpool and Arsenal both dropped points uh, in the Premier League on Sunday as well. And then West Ham, the 2-0 down to Leverkusen with their home legs still to go. Aston Villa have got a slender advantage against Lille, but the away leg, there's still plenty uh, to play for. So if you're not on free hit, then I really recommend, unless you've got exact funds, to save your transfers until Friday because quite literally anything could happen in terms of injuries with so much at stake. And it's going to provide us crucial information on, you know, who's fit, who's not, who's likely to get a rest soon in the league. Um, there's lots to read into there. So you can't really make firm FPL decisions until you've got all that knowledge and Friday's press conferences as well. Free hit team selection then, and I'm going to go all out with 11 players that double. I have actually put this team that I'm going to show you into the Fantasy Football Hub My Team Tool. You can do this as well with a seven-day free trial using the link in the description. It's given me a 99% team rating on 124.2 predicted points. There can be huge gains made this week, so I'm really excited to see how the squad gets on. Now, I've probably got a little bit differential with my goalkeeper selection. I've seen a lot of managers go with Crystal Palace's Henderson. I have actually picked out Pickford, who is doing really well this season in terms of his vast routes to points because we can get from him save points and we can get from him clean sheets. And, you know, he's ranked among the top goalkeepers for saves this season. He's got 94 saves, but add into the mix his clean sheet potential. Nine clean sheets this season. Only David Raya has got more clean sheets. And, you know, he tends to be in and around the Everton bonus points as well because they're not a side who particularly score a lot of goals. He's got two home games. He's obviously got the Merseyside derby. And given... Um, Liverpool's current form, literally anything could happen in that game. And he's got Forrest at home as well. Um, 
Everton have got it all to play for at the moment. And we haven't seen a penalty save yet from Pickford this season or an attacking return. He's a player more than capable of getting an odd assist in a season. So he's certainly due in that department as well. Basically, when he keeps a clean sheet, he's more often than not in the bonus points. So I'm really happy to pick him because of his routes to points. Moving into defence, and despite the poor form of Liverpool, I am tempted to go with a Liverpool defender for their away trips to Fulham and Everton. Now, it was Robertson who looked really lively in the first half of the weekend game against Crystal Palace. Obviously, no clean sheet. He cleared a ball off the line. He was on corners. He was Everything was going through him down Liverpool's left. But we saw... Um, Bradley go off with an injury just after the break, which saw Trent Alexander-Arnold return from injury and come on. And with Trent potentially fit, I am tempted to pick him now in my free hit squad. He is a placeholder. Um, money's not going to be an issue on the free hit, so I could literally go with any Liverpool defender. It could be Virgil, it could be Robertson, could be Trent. But the minute Trent's kind of the sexy pick in terms of FPL, we know what he can deliver in terms of attacking output, but I need to see limited minutes for him in the Europa League before locking in that selection. Now, I'm also going with Arsenal's Gabriel, who's been a mainstay of my squad for most of the season. Again, he's a player. This Arsenal defence have kept plenty of clean sheets this season, more clean sheets than any other side in the league. So he had to be a lock in my side because we know that he's pretty much going to play 90 minutes week in, week out. That's what makes it so appealing. You don't have to stress on whether he's in the lineup or not. And you look at Arsenal, they've kept three clean sheets in their last four Premier League games and you know what a menace Gabriel can be in terms of his goal threat in the box. We know that Arsenal are very good aerially and we know that Gabriel is never too far away from an attacking return. I mean you look at what he's done already this season, he's got three goals, he's also got an assist and he's had 28 shots on goal which is pretty impressive from him seven big chances ranks him top among defenders now the big decision in the defense was whether to double up on Arsenal's defense or not um or whether to double up on the attack instead and it has been a tight call um Ben White would probably be the one that I'd go for if I was to go for it but we've seen him subbed early in the Villa game for Tommy Asu, who's now back fit and with the demands of Arsenal's schedule there's no guarantees that White plays both games and yeah he's been subbed the right side of 60 minutes he looked into a clean sheet against Aston Villa who scored those two late goals but that's not always going to be the case so there's question marks there. So I've decided to double up on Arsenal's attack instead because, you know, Cole Palmer, I can absolutely see him scoring at the Emirates. So instead, I've picked out Crystal Palace's Tyrick Mitchell, who has been doing pretty well in recent games. We've seen a bit of consistency with a clean sheet against Liverpool. He also got an assist in that game. He's not a player that has masses of potential, but he has got one goal and three assists this season. And when he does get an attacking return, he tends to get bonus points as well. So again, I'm not sure how much clean sheet potential we've got from Crystal Palace. Two home games, though, should help them. He's probably the least exciting pick in this 11. Um, but having looked at wanting to double up on Liverpool's attack and Arsenal's attack... Probably not wanting to double up on Everton's defence, having gone Pickford. I'm spreading my bets with Mitchell as things stand. Moving into the attack then, and probably the easiest selection had to be Mohamed Salah. He's been a player that has underperformed since the international break, but has looked brilliant. He's had 23 shots on goal, the most of any player. He's had six big chances, which ranks him second of any player. Um, but he's underperformed. An expected goal involvement of 3.9 has only yielded two attacking returns. But where there may be a bit of rotation in Liverpool's attack, I think we can rely on Salah to start every game. He, got, uh, he was on the bench in uh, the Europa League first round against Atalanta last week, which showed that uh, Klopp was trying to rest him in, in Europe so that he can 
play all of the minutes needed in the Premier League. He's on penalties as well. And while we've got competition from Darwin and Diaz with Jota and Gakpo, I feel like Salah's going to be a lock. Um, so he had to be in, as did Arsenal's Bakayo Saka. He's a player who... He hasn't been really explosive in recent games. He's only got one goal since the international break. Uh, he missed the Luton game as well. Um, but you just know that he's the most potent of Arsenal's attackers. In terms of the double game week assets, he's the one with the most fantasy points this season. Seven ahead of Salah. So again... It would be silly to go without him. He's got to be a lock in the side as well. Um, you look at his routes to points, penalties, set pieces. He's going to be one to go for. Now, as I mentioned, I want to double up on the Arsenal attack. Odegaard is currently flagged with injury. So it's made it easier to go with Kai Havertz, who has got 81 FPL points in this calendar year. He's ranked fifth on this list, five points behind Saka, five goals, six assists in this time. He's been a consistent starter for Arsenal and he is a player that's explosive. We're getting to a point where there is a lot of rotation across Arsenal's attack. Hopefully the flag for Odegaard helps Havertz but maybe doesn't limit his position. So it's something to keep an eye on. I could still well go with Odegaard. Obviously a lot will depend on minutes midweek but at the moment I am leaning towards Havertz. I do want to double up on Liverpool's attack as well and there's a bit of a dilemma to make of whether I go with Diaz, whether I go with Nunes or maybe a little bit of a punt on Jota. I'm not considering Gakpo because I feel like Klopp doesn't really trust him and he, I'm expecting him to be an impact sub for both games. But again, we need to wait on minutes in Europe. You could go with a McAllister if you wanted to play it safe, but I feel like his route to points are more limited. I feel like Darwin and Jota are going to compete for minutes leading the line, whereas it's Diaz with the three attacker returns since the international break that has been most explosive. And a, a lot of play seems to be going down Liverpool's left-hand side at the moment so he's getting a spot in the midfield as well and I'm very excited to see what he can do. The final spot in the midfield is going to Crystal Palace talisman Eberichi Eze with home games against West Ham and Newcastle. He's been a player that his season has been marred with injury but he is coming back into the side now and back into form as well. Since returning uh, game week 27, he's got three attacking returns in six appearances, getting consistently playing 90 minutes now as well. And his routes to points plentiful. Crystal Palace are playing all out attack. He's on penalties. He's on some set pieces as well. So I think the fixtures, the two home games are certainly going to help him and I'm excited to see what he can produce in the double. Having doubled up then on Liverpool and Arsenal assets before getting to the forward line, the first name in there is Bournemouth's Dominic Solanke. He's a player I just can't ignore. He's been in my team for the last few game weeks. He's got five goals in the last three game weeks and we also need to just think about what he can produce for us. He is well in the golden boot race, which seems crazy. Haaland's got 20 goals. Watkins has got 19. It's Solanke joint with Salah and Isaac, who's in third place with 17 goals. And he fit, I feel like he's got the bit between his teeth at the moment. He's obviously on penalties. Bournemouth are still putting in those performances. They don't feel like a team that are on the beach at the moment. Um, excuse the pun there. So yeah, he's definitely in. And then the final player that I'm going with in the team is Wolves' Mateus Kuna, who is their top scorer this season with 11 goals. He got his first start since injury against Nottingham Forest last weekend where he scored two goals and so we know he's explosive he scored a hat-trick against Chelsea back in game week 23 seen some other big hauls from him as well Arsenal at home I feel like it's a fixture that you could back him for and then the Bournemouth fixture again is going to be one to target he scored incidentally against Bournemouth in the reverse fixture earlier this season and has scored against Arsenal as well so he's probably a bit more differential he's going to be popular with free hitters but I don't think it's going to be that big a week for free hit given the amount of managers that actually played it in game week 29 so hopefully I can steal a little bit of an advantage there with Kuna in my side. <laughs>
Now, when it comes to captaincy, there are only two names in the frame, Salah and Saka. Now, at the moment, I just feel like Salah is the one that's underlying numbers have been strongest since the international break. He's maybe got a little bit more sharpness than Saka at the moment, who continues to be seen limping after each game. Now, a lot could be swung by what happens in Europe in midweek. Say Salah plays 90, Saka gets limited minutes. I can't see it happening or, or Saka plays really well in the Champions League. I could be tempted to, to swing it. But at the moment, it is going to be Salah captain, Saka vice, who, who is a worthy understudy. <laughs> If you ran a free hit or not this week, hopefully you found this video useful either way. Hit that like button, subscribe to the channel as well, and make sure you get your team rated over on Fantasy Football Hub using the link in the description to this video. I'll be back on Friday with the press conference stream. Make sure that you've hit that notify button so that you don't miss it. Thank you for watching.